Well, good morning. It is uh, Monday, typically when I like to do these videos, and uh, we are continuing the soil series. Oh, yes, I did get distracted over the last couple of days, did a couple other things that were uh, uh, fun, the Carbon X information, the release, uh, some of the information about that, and uh, obviously, I, you know, band practice, had a little fun with that and kind of wanted to share it. That was actually the first time that anybody uh, publicly had seen us play together. So that was kind of, kind of fun. Anyway, um, continuing soils. There is now, um, I'm not going to say now it's been happening for a long time. There, there are, uh, quite a few products and companies that have, uh, made their push and their um, uh, their sort of piece of the marketplace on the concept of providing active biological agents uh, as far as uh, live microbes, yeasts, things like that um, into their products. Um, the whole concept behind that, where it kind of came from, is uh, from agriculture where um, over tillage, over fertilization, over chemicalization, all of that kind of stuff led to uh, less productive soils uh, is a good way to put that. Not dead, um, not dead soil, but less productive. And uh, oftentimes because soils would start to get tighter, um, they, the, there needed to be an addition to help take down some of the stubble, uh, some of the crop residues and things like that. So the concept of getting live microbes um, down onto the soil became, you know, fairly, fairly common. It, it never really took off widespread. It was always somewhat of a niche area, um, but it translated over into the golf side uh, pretty quickly, especially on greens. And, um, you know, the greens program of a golf course makes up the most, really the highest amount of their budget, um, as far as fertilizers and chemicals and, and everything that has to be done time really. So some of these materials were used there to help manage, uh, organic matter buildup on the, uh, greens so that they didn't get too, um, hold too much water so that the sand was draining properly, so the roots were going properly, less fungus, uh, less potential for heat and, and things like that. So, so that's kind of where they sort of fit in. And then it like translated into the other uh, rest of the professional turf market as something that, you know, people thought they needed for that reason. Now I bring this all up because as time goes on, I've seen companies come and go and products come and go that relate to that. Um, I have experimented with those live biologicals uh, and, and done a lot in, in my time with them, but I don't agree with it. Um, and here's why. Let me just spit a couple of facts at you just so you kind of have an idea. Now, typically, if you look at um, the labels and your kind of seeing what's in there, there is a, a ratio of, you know, like a 10 to the 10th power or 10 to whatever it be, uh, CFUs of a particular type of bacteria. And that would be colony forming units is what that is. So uh, you have a certain amount per whatever certain amount of this particular canister or gallon or bag or whatever it is that's in there. Well, that's fine. Um, when you take a look at soil, if you take a spoonful of soil, just, you know, that goes big, a little spoonful of soil, you have in your hand about 2 billion life forms inside there, 2 billion inside that little tiny, you know, 10 grams or whatever of soil. It's, it's phenomenal how much is in there. And, you know, even translating that into the human body, our bodies contain more bacteria inside inside each one of us, not even what's crawling all over the outside, you know, that basically is doing all of this stuff, um, as there are human beings on the planet. I mean, we're talking billions and billions and billions and billions. We outnumber them, each individual portion of us, just in our guts, outnumber the amount of humans on the planet. So microbial life is vast and it makes up a significant amount of soil. And, you know, your 
nutrients that you're feeding to the soil, the nutrients like nitrogen, help to stimulate those bacteria. Um, nitrogen is one of the things that are consumed very easily and readily by certain bacteria and, uh, and microbes. I'm going to say microbes. I, I, I'm going to flip back and forth. You can hear me say a few things here. If I'm talking about biologicals, it's live uh, material in the soil. This could be um, typically we're going to be talking about microbes, bacteria. Um, we'll get into the fungi portion as well. So I'll, I'll try to make sure I'm saying exactly what's what in these statements. So. Now, I want you to just sort of think back to what I said before. One of the reasons that that material was brought to the market was to manage crop residues, basically break down organic matter faster. That's really it, okay? So digest material faster, uh, turn it into usable uh, humus faster. That was, that was the whole concept. So that's all well and good. Um, and, it, and it does work that way. And actually that is the trouble when adding some of these materials that are putting live matter into these bottles or into these bags to go out as a soil corrective product because it's chasing digestible material mostly. That's the easiest form that uh, we've seen in labs and what people are doing, you know, to, to basically create and um, flocculate this, these bacteria is there's easier ones to do than others. So, you know, we have all of these strains kind of working together all the time in the soil, just moving back and forth. And then we can come in and load in something else that actually adds to an imbalance of one particular strain. Now we have material that's going to be chasing down organic matter faster, hunting for the nitrogen quicker, stimulating itself faster, uh, growing at a higher pace, and then as soon as it runs out of the easy food source, it starts to go towards what would be feeding the plant, and that's where we run into issues. So typically, people who've been on these programs with these live bacterial pro products for a long time see such a decline in their overall health of their turf uh, in their crops, in, in all of this, you know, whatever they're growing with it, because you get an imbalance, it starts to go after the plant's food more than it should. So if you're feeding a typical NPK program, 30% of that nitrogen, roughly, is going towards soil life. That's what's going to use it, energize it, sustain itself, move it along. And, and then that's about all it can take. Well, you know, if you start misaligning your nutrients and favoring more of like addition of microbial stuff, you're going to get some bad, bad interactions because your nitrogen food source is going down while these populations are going up and that adds up to a net, a net loss of organic matter. So again, the reason this is kind of coming up, it's very important to understand there is a balance in your soil life. There's a balance all the time. And even if you go out with a fungicide or you know any sort of chemical that, that's going to be somewhat of an antibiotic, okay, you are going to have an interaction for a short time. You are going to knock back life. You, you are going to do that. But the amount that the bacteria is reproducing and reproducing and reproducing, it's a very short time. Same thing, you know, uh, that people can, Agree, disagree, doesn't really matter on this. I, opinion is your opinion, but if you take antibiotics to knock something out, it takes a little bit, but automatically you start to rebuild your own gut flora and fauna. It's the same thing out in the field, out in the turf, out in the soil, where you can knock it back for a minute, but you're not gonna kill it. You're not going to ruin the soil. You're not going to mess it out unless you are doing that over and over and over and over and over and over again, then you might start to run into issues. So let's kind of move on to this, this rest of the soil life. Typically, so like in, when I refer to a biological, uh, like a biological stimulant is different than, you know, active, Biologicals. I think that people kind of get those two kind of mesh together. When you are sort of augmenting what's there naturally by providing an, like an energy source or a low level of food or something like that to kind of get things working a little bit, you can just kind of kickstart 
and be more efficient with your bacteria rather than taking a group that is larger than one and overpowering others, you still let the soil do what it can do because the soil life is just like a plant that regulates what it needs. So if you are feeding simple sugars uh, or you know even complex or you're, you're adding material that can be for the soil life, it's still only gonna take what it can, okay? So it's really important to understand that a biological stimulant is meant to work with what's existing in the soil not add in a whole other group to, you know, create a chain reaction that you might not actually want. So, out of what, what I do, um, I'm gonna move into fungi, I'm sorry, just so everybody kind of, kind of gets this. Uh, you know, I use the term biological stimulant a lot because we are feeding just kind of a, a low level soil food all the time, but we are creating space and more air in that soil so that there can be more colonies forming on their own and actually have a little bit better uh, ability to establish what's needed and then use those nutrients more efficiently so that things are getting pushed back into the plant the way that they should be. So that's kind of how that works. Um, fungi in the soil, always great to talk about, exists all over the place. Now sensitive I will say that, you know, one thing that can knock back um, like any sort of mycelium, uh, if you're dealing with mycorrhiza, you can affect mycorrhiza with heavy doses of fungicides. You can because that's that's there, but it'll also rebuild and, and build itself back. So there is a connection that happens between the root and the soil and that starts to feed through this mass network of mycelium. So. We want that interaction to continue to happen. So those are kind of one of those, like you have to look out for overuse of fungicide, um, you know, just for that particular reason, but it will rebuild. And again, you know, I have people who uh, have purchased and used um, topical mycorrhizae. If you feel like that works for you, great. Uh, I from what I did with it. As far as uh, for turf grass, standard turf grass, I, I, uh, I don't really see much of a value because it's hard to get it flushed down into the ground properly in order to do what it needs to do. Now for prep, uh, for um, you know, using in flower beds with trees and uh, you know, soil before you sod or, or anything like that, I think it's great. Um, spraying down, I think you're just sort of hoping for the best. And, and again, maybe there is some interaction, maybe. Uh, I would say that on things like golf greens and stuff like that, where there's where there's a lot more air because you're dealing with a lot of sand, probably a better fit uh, because you can get stuff to wash through those larger pore sizes than you could with say clay. So again, think of your soil as already being whole and complete. It's got its life in there. Um, it's got nutrients that it's working with. It's got roots running through it. It has earthworms moving through. It's got nematodes in there. There's everything sort of feeding and eating off of everything else. It's already there, okay? What makes it more fertile is higher organic matter, greater humus in the soil. Getting a good balance of that like 25% air and 25% water in the soil. That's where a lot of things get a little messed up where you've got, uh, like in sandy soils, you have so much more air and less water holding and in clay, you have way more water holding and less air and that affects bacteria. The same as anything else. So if you have, let's say you have too much water in the system, it's just like you and I, if we're underwater for too long, yep, that's it, done. So. Microbial interaction happens the same way. If it's sitting and underwater and it's being deoxygenated, there's another group of bacteria that will start to take place that can function in those low oxygen environments, and that's typically an anaerobic bacteria. Anaerobic bacteria will continue to work in the soil in the same manner that the aerobic bacteria did, but at a much, much slower pace, about 17 times is about the speed difference between the two. So aerobic will digest something about 17 times faster than anaerobic. So it'll still work, but they live in those low level, low oxygen environments and can continue to operate to help, you know, hopefully 
reoxygenate that area. So that's why, you know, oftentimes you see these things where, uh, you know, roots get too wet, it gets too moist, it just suffocates. You know, a plant root will suffocate, a tree will suffocate, it's drowning basically. And the microbial life around it is also drowning. So you, you have to kind of get in there to see that balance of, you know, drainage and, you know, air and you have all of these different things. And this is why we focus so much on that carbon side. This is the reason. Because the addition to carbon, like, you know, these micro tiny, just little things that we're doing like with humic acid and stuff, we want to just lay down there in the soil and create these little, that little, tiny little fragments that will start to hold water a little bit better than that coarse sand. So it'll start to hold a little more and give those roots like a little more chance to grab things. And then in clay, when you've got all these tightly bound areas, we want to just open those up, just trying to try to open that soil just a little bit, again, drainage. So one is catching and one is actually allowing for drainage. So it's, it, you really have to watch that balance, but that's why we're always talking about this addition of carbon, this addition of organic matter, helping the roots drive down deeper, feeding that proper balance of nutrients so that the soil life gets what it needs and it can in turn work with what's down underground and we make those roots drive down deeper and they begin to break and shed off and they become soil food for everything else and now we have a nice sustaining cycle. So that's really all I have to say about that. Now this is something that can go very, very, very in depth and um, I kind of have to pick how far I want to go with it in these videos because it, it can get boring, I, I'll be honest. I, I put plenty of people to sleep talking about this in groups and in audiences. And um, I think for the average homeowner or professional lawn care applicator, you know, any of you guys out there, the science is really cool. Um, of what goes into this. You know, it's so much more than just slinging out fertilizer and, you know, hoping for the best. You know, from, from my side, with the development, looking at soil structures, making recommendations on those soils, it's way more in depth. And knowing those chemical reactions and then those biological reactions are very, very important when you're trying to really correct and balance out a soil system. For most of you, I'm trying to provide something that hits these categories so that you don't have to really think about it. I would rather you know it and know that somebody is looking to make sure that you're getting everything that you need inside of your program. That's more important to me. So that's really what I'm going for here with the products that I develop and what I get out and when they're put out at certain times a year to do certain things. There's a reason and there's a method to all of that madness. And it's all about developing and nurturing that soil life so that you can start to lower and lower some of those nitrogen needs so that we don't quite get so addicted to it. That's it. That's what I got. Um, I'm not putting any music on this one. Sorry. You'll have to wait for the next one. I'll talk to you guys all real soon.